Welcome, everyone. It's so great to see so many of you with us from so many places across the country and the world. I want to be among the first to welcome you to our herd. We are the bison. So um, I'm hoping many of you choose to become permanent members of our herd. But for today, you are part of Southwestern. This is an amazing place. As Dean Gear said, I've been here four months now. This is the fifth place I've had the honor of serving as Dean. And it is an incredibly special place, an incredibly dynamic place. As you can see from some of the icons on this page, we are a top school for entertainment law. We are an incredibly diverse community. We have top programs in a variety of areas, including <clears throat> advocacy and litigation, family law, international law. We send competition teams across the country and they come back with more than their fair share of victory. So there is a lot always going on in our community. Southwestern holds a very special place in the California and particularly the Los Angeles legal community. As we were talking about as a ramp up to the formal program, we had the first night program in Los Angeles. We have a ton of firsts. You can see just a small snippet of our first on this page. The, our very first graduate was a woman and she be, went on to become the first female public defender in the nation. We had the first black female appellate justice in the nation, the first Chinese American federal district judge in the continental United States. So Southwestern has always been a place that welcomed people who had the ability and the desire to practice law, regardless of what they look like or who they came from. And those people in turn have gone out and really transformed the face of the city of Los Angeles, for example, our alum, Mayor Bradley, who Tom Bradley, who served for mayor for 40, uh, this is the longest serving uh, mayor. We've had mayors serve for 40 total years representing um, our great school. Um, they've changed the face of legal practice. We have alums who are doing cutting edge litigation, who are in government, who are leading public service organizations. So we are a school that really prides ourselves on being able to give back and serve this wonderful community of Los Angeles. I am so sorry that we could not host you today in our wonderful facilities. This is a shot of the Bullocks Wilshire building. It is one of our three buildings on campus. It was a former department store and it's on the historic landmark of register of buildings. We have taken a lot of time to really restore it and it is just an art deco masterpiece. This building includes classrooms and a lot of faculty offices, our tea room, with is, which in non-COVID times is a gathering place, our law library, our fitness center, and so much else. We also have another building, our Westmoreland building, which includes classrooms and a lot of administrative offices, some faculty offices, and of course the residences, which include our student apartment. So it really is a fantastic environment in which to study law. Another thing that Southwestern prides itself on is its flexibility. We really try to meet students where they are and give them a variety of options to complete the JD degree given their circumstances. So we have a traditional full-time program and most of our students are in that program. We have a part-time evening program, which is now hybrid. So some evenings you come to campus, some evenings you take your classes online. We actually have two part-time day programs. One is designed especially for people who are parents of younger children and they need to be home in the afternoon so they can take their classes in the morning. The other one is more flexible that you need to take your classes essentially during the day and you can mix and match your times there. Dean Rolnick is here and she is the Dean of the country's first two-year JD program. You'll see other schools advertise that you can complete the JD in two years, but that just means you're going through on your own and taking classes year round. 
Here we have a very deliberate program on a special schedule and you go through as a cohort and it's a very tight knit group and they go on to be personal friends and professional colleagues for their careers. And we also have some ways that you can put together a dual degree such as our JD MBA program. Now the beauty of a JD is that it's a general degree. So once you earn that degree and pass the bar exam in the jurisdiction where you choose to practice, you can decide to practice whatever you want or in multiple areas, or you can decide to start in one area, maybe criminal law and decide a few years later, you'd like to shift in bankruptcy or family law. So our JD is that general degree. We have required courses, but you have the opportunity to take courses throughout the curriculum, but some students have a passion and they know exactly what they want to do. So we have developed six concentrations where you can marshal your elective credits and sort of get a head start in that area. And we're considering more areas as well. We're also a school that is about hands-on experiential learning. From the very first semester, you're going to be able to get in there in our laws classes, our legal writing classes, and do things that are akin to representing actual clients. And then as you move through our curriculum, we have a tremendously varied and successful externship program. And we have multiple in-house clinics. So what's a clinic? A clinic is where you get to serve as the lawyer representing actual clients. And we also have a variety of community service and public service projects. So you can get involved as deeply as you want to in the actual practice of law and working with actual attorneys throughout your time here. This page shows the statistics for our class that just started this past August. We started with about 380 students. And here you can see the breakdown on the top of the traditional day versus students versus scale versus part-time day. You can see that we are 51% racially and ethnically diverse. More than 40% of our students are first gen students. So we understand this and we put a lot of support around our courses. So we're not just gonna drop you in the classroom. We're gonna make sure that you have the tools to succeed, to succeed in the classroom and outside of the classroom. We draw people from around the country and around the world. We're slightly more female than male. And you can see that we have a wide range of, of ages in our student body as well. Now, as I mentioned, and I'm sure as some others are going to address in more detail, we do have a rigorous required curriculum. And this really prepares you not only for the practice of law, but to pass the bar exam. And we're doing very well in our bar pass statistics. And you can also see that our scale program has its own curriculum. So you're not just spending for yourself, you are with a group that moves through in a very deliberate way. And although many aspects of our curriculum look like other law schools, we have things that are very unique to us. For example, our academic support and bar preparation program, which begins in the first year with the foundations of law and practice. This gives you a background in how to approach law school, how to study for law school exams. It allows you to begin developing your professional identity. Another unique thing is the fact that in your first year, you can take an elective. That's pretty rare. Most times you don't get to take an elective until maybe your third semester if you're a full-time student, maybe not until your fourth semester, but this allows you to pick an area and start exploring it and determining how you want to build the rest of your curriculum and the direction of your career. When I interviewed for this position, I was just taken with the professors here. They are amazing. They're smart, they have a varied professional background, and they care. They care a lot about the students. They work a lot with students outside of the classroom. They're always thinking about creative ways to engage students in the curriculum. And they're just an amazing, amazing respectful collegial group, the best I have worked with. And so I'm very, very pleased to be able to say, come here because you want to study with our professors. 
And again, they think about ways to integrate the practice of law into the doctrinal classes. So for example, this is a picture of one of our professors, Isabel Gunning, and she integrates actual practice sessions, courtroom labs into her evidence class, which is amazing. You don't see that at every law school. And our professors are on the cutting edge. They are in the news. These two items are just from the last couple of days. We had one professor quoted extensively in the New York Times. We had another one featured in an article in The Hill. Um, professor Van Landingham is a former military officer, and she does a lot in terms of national security and military law and criminal justice and things like that. And these are just a couple of our faculty who were featured this week in the media. We also offer unique programs that are adjacent to our curriculum. For example, the director of our writing center has launched a storytelling project. Now think about it. Lawyers are professional communicators. And most of the time we're expected to persuade. And what persuades better than a good story? So we take the time to provide programs for our students and our alums on how to improve their storytelling skills. I attended one of these programs just yesterday with our alum and someone who's also a professor. He runs our trial advocacy program, Joey Esposito. And he really did keep me on the edge of my seat wanting to know more about his trial techniques. And our alums really give back to help us create unique programs. So two of our alums, really excellent trial lawyers, Brian Panish on the plaintiff side, Wally Yoka on the defense side, got together and have created a new fellowship program for students finishing their first year where you get to do an externship with a defense litigation firm and a plaintiff's litigation firm during your first summer with a stipend. Again, I haven't seen anything like that at another law school, and I'm very excited to work with this community to continue building innovative programs like this. And going back to the idea that we don't just toss you into the classroom and let you fend for yourself. We build a lot of support around you. So not only do we have people in our academic support and bar preparation program who will guide you through learning how to approach your law school classes and exams and that ever important bar exam, but we have an outside psychologist who works with us. So you have access to a counseling center. We have a wonderful career services department that will help you plan out your job searches and plot steps that will put you in a competitive position to get those first jobs. Just this past week, we opened a food pantry on campus. We know that some of our students and employees potentially suffer from food insecurity. And if you're hungry, you cannot focus and learn. So we try to provide those resources that will allow our students to succeed. We're in the final stages of launching a professional clothes closet. We pride ourselves in placing students in externships and a lot of our students have part-time jobs, but maybe you don't have enough professional clothes to go out four or five days a week into these settings. And, and feel comfortable and powerful. And so we want to give you that resource as well. A program that I'm about to launch for graduating students is called Bridge to Practice. There's simply some things that you don't get in the law school curriculum. There's so much to learn when you're becoming a lawyer. So I'm gonna take five or six of these topics that I didn't know about and I went out and made mistakes and didn't know how to do them when I was a, a new attorney. I come from a single family household. My mom was a, a secretary for a state agency. I didn't come from a family with lawyers. I didn't know lawyers. And so again, I get it. I get that you're trying to not only be the best lawyer, but to be really a business professional and you need those skills. So some of the things we're gonna cover are how to really make a great first impression at your first job. We're gonna talk about the economics of law practice. We're gonna talk about dining and event etiquette and so much more. We also have 
program is designed for specifically for first generation students. We have a wellness program that includes um, staying healthy mentally and physically. And we have just a wide variety of student organizations. So you can find your niche, you can find your group. And then we're always bringing excellent speakers to campus and different programs to campus. So again, like I, I said at the beginning, this is a dynamic place where you're going to be able to find your fit and to really excel and achieve what you want to. And I'm just sharing this final slide with you. These are the employment statistics from the class of 2020, the pandemic. And as you can see, we, we did very well with that group. It's actually our stats are a little higher. A few of the, the people had jobs, but they couldn't start after the deadline. But you can see, you can go to law firms and public interest and business and government and so much more from Southwestern. So we're so excited that you joined us today to learn more about us. We hope that you will consider us. There's Dean Rolnick with her scale, scale group that you, you come with us and that in a few short years, this is going to be you.